Hi friends, this is Tony at Cube, the semantic layer for data apps, and today we're going to take a look at demonstrating the granular options for accessing Cube Cloud via the SQL API. So we'll cover things like handling credentials for multiple users, applying row level security, object level security for those cubes and views that we want to determine which users can access which cannot, and user impersonation if we need a master user. Uh, or uh, several of them. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now the first thing we'll take a look at is our default connection. So for the SQL API on your overview page in uh, Cube Cloud, we can see the connect to SQL API page. That's going to have your host name, your port, your username, your password, your database, uh, just your generic connection information here. and. Oftentimes this is good enough to get all the functionality that we need, but if we want to go deeper, so for example, we want to uh, handle credentials for multiple users, well, let's take a look at how to do that. So let's hop over to um, our data model. We'll take a look at kubejs. So this is a file uh, where we can customize our deployment. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll enable this uh, code block of check SQL auth and we've defined a few users in here I'll go back through this as soon as I comment it or uncomment it so we've got a uh, username Alice we've got Bob we've got Charlie we've got a service account and then we've got our cube SQL user so this is the same user as what we had um, available through the overview page so inside each of these blocks, we're checking to see if the request is for that user, or if the user is trying to log in as this username. Uh, we're going to return the password and say this is the password for that user. And obviously, this isn't very secure, but we can write a function or have a, a service that we call an API endpoint uh, to validate the password or check the password for us. So this is just for demonstration. For the security context, we're also able to apply a custom security context based on the user. So we can pass things like we want the username in as the user ID assertion. We want ops for the department, admin for role, and then this user is not part of HR. So we'll see how all these can play into the uh, security features that we look at next. So we've got Alice, we've got Bob, We've got Charlie. Before we save this, let's just go take a quick look at our um, at, at our code. So we'll be using uh, a Python notebook here, uh, just the regular um, driver for connecting to the uh, Postgres database, Postgres interface for uh, Cube Cloud. So our connection string is going to be very simple. Um, it's uh, we're connecting to the host name, the database, the user, and the password that we saw from our um, from the SQL page, the SQL API connection page. We're going to get back a cursor. We're going to execute a query against that cursor. Let me move myself out of the way, and we'll get uh, the opportunity to run a query from that. So select uh, a few fields from the sales view, and then print those out. So first of all. Again, we're using username cube. So we'll run that. We'll see that the data comes back for multiple cities. We're asking for two metrics, the extended price and the average order value from sales. And we're getting that back for each of the cities. So now if we want to move on and uh, use these other usernames, so we've got Alice, we've got Bob, Charlie, and service account. There's other configurations we can use here. So let's head over back to our cube page. And we can see that we're enabling these accounts. We'll go ahead and save those changes. And as our uh, API reloads, we can see that we can start running these queries as these different users. So we'll try first logging in as Alice with the password PWDA. So great, so we've got another account that can access all the data. Now we've got Bob 
Maybe we want to have a secondary user that can only access a single city. So in that case, um, here's an example with Bob. Um, now, Bob's role is set a little differently. So Alice, uh, his role is admin and does not have a city associated here. Bob has a city of Austin associated um, and is not an admin. Also the password. So we're able to tap into our environment variables and instead of hosting or instead of saving the password right here in plain text uh, as part of the, uh, the JS file, we can drop this in our environment variable and extract it for the verification uh, during the, when this function runs. So let's take a look what happens first um, when we try to log in as Bob and query the sales table. So here we've got Bob uncommented running the same query from sales. So that's coming back with all the cities. So what we want to do is enforce a row level security op uh, operation on that. So that's going to be part of the query rewrite function. So if I uncomment this here, um, what we're first going to do is check to make sure that there's a user ID um, with every query. So if not, then um, we're going to invalidate that, send back an error message and not send through any data. We don't want any leaks. Now for the uh, username does not equal admin, then we want to go ahead and add a filter to the, to the query. And that's going to be the user city. So when that city is coming through as Austin, we're going to pass this Austin value in um, to each query. And it's going to automatically add it behind the scenes. Um, and we don't have to uh, make sure that our application is adding this. We're enforcing the security here in, on the queue level. Uh, and finally, if this, uh, if admin is, uh, if the role is admin, uh, the query filter is not going to be applied, and we're going to have uh, just the same query run. So the admin does not get the row level security applied. So now let's save this down and go back to see if we can't get Austin only to to uh, appear. Great, so now we've enabled row level security. We've got Austin here. And so the next thing we might want to do is enable object level security. So maybe we have a sensitive table. Um, in this case, let's use the, uh, the users cube uh, where we have, maybe this is our HR table where we've got all of our employee data. And so we'll just, uh, instead of public true for the uh, security here for the visibility, we're going to change it to uh, the is r is hr function or uh, sorry value. So within our compile context, in the security context, is hr is going to be a boolean, and that's going to and that's going to depend on the user that's logged in. So the, that's part of the security context, and that's going to determine whether or not this is this. Uh, view is actually visible or sorry this cube is actually visible so let's go in as well to our cube.js file and enable passing that context through to the app so we need to uncomment that as well that completes the loop here and passes that is hr uh, through to the through to the context the security context so we'll get that saved then we'll head back. Um, and one of the ways that we can test this is we can see the information schema of cube and briefly just check which tables are available. So this is for uh, for Bob and we'll see which which tables Bob has access to here. And information schema tables, um, he has access to orders and sales. Now we've got another user uh, Charlie. So if you remember from our uh, diagram here, so Charlie has, uh, Charlie's in the HR department. He's an analyst and you can see New York. Uh, but the important part is, is HR is true, whereas is HR is false for both Alice and Bob. So let's see how this one looks. Go back to our 
code. And let's in it, let's run this query for Charlie. So now Charlie has an extra table here. Charlie has access to that users table. So what happens if we query uh, just a standard query from the users table? We'll just get a couple fields here uh, as Charlie. So Charlie, because they have the New York data associated with them, he only sees data for New York and he sees the, the gender breakdowns and the um, the count of those users as well. So what happens if we go back and uh, you know test Alice, for example? She's an admin, but she's not from HR. So admin, or sorry, uh, Alice gets an error here. Um, the table with users is not found. So now we've seen we can control both the rows and the objects that a specific user can see. One more scenario we should demonstrate is user impersonation. So if we want a super user uh, to be able to impersonate other users, perhaps that user is part of an application and the application is aware of the username and has already authenticated that user and wants we want to just pass through the username that we want to query on behalf of. So we've gone through and uh, added one more account here, the service account with a password here. So let's go into the QJS file and look at what that looks like. So for username service, we've got an admin role so they can see um, there's no city here as well. They're just a uh, uh, they're not an analyst, they have access to the HR data, um, and there's the password for the service account. So uh, it's a true read everything account. Um, you'll notice the original cube account, so this kubejs SQL user from the config, uh, that is also a service account with a role admin and is true. So we can create multiple uh, service accounts that can see everything through this process. Now, there's one more piece that we'll add here to the configuration, this can switch SQL user uh, function. So if the current user is service, then return true. They can they have the ability to impersonate a different user, otherwise return false. And the way that that impersonation is enabled is through the double underscore user in the uh, in the query so we use the where clause where double underscore user equals Bob and we'll be able to run the query um, using the service account credentials but running on behalf of the user Bob so let's go ahead and enable the service account and let's see so this is sales we'll run the sales query on behalf of Bob. Remember this isn't the sensitive table. Uh, this is the one that everybody has access to. Oh, so what I'm one thing I uh, didn't do, I can't, I don't have ability to change the security context. I need to save my change here. Rookie mistake. All right, we'll head back and we'll try it again. All right, great. So Bob saw Austin here. Um, if we query without that filter, without that where user equals Bob, we just use the vanilla query. We should see all those rows come back. Great, so we've got Los Angeles, Mountain View, Seattle, etc. Great, so we've been able to demonstrate how to handle credentials for multiple users how to apply role level security for multiple users, object level security as well, and then impersonate users on top of that. So if you have any questions, let us know in the forum or comments, and we'll see you next time.